G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday morning here in Australia and we can see the market's having a bit of a pullback already. Is this going to be the start of something bigger or are we just going to kind of hover around this, you know, 58 to sort of $60,000 range, you know, for the foreseeable future? That really is the question and in all fairness, I don't know. It's, it's an uncertain market at the moment, at least from my point of view, and I never offer financial advice. So again, for me, I'm not really doing too much. You know, it might not be a bad time to take some profits if you're really unsure. But for me, I think we're just going to kind of range around here for a while. And I do think there's more upside left in the market. So I'm not too worried at the moment. But look, if it does start to sort of, you know, dramatically go down, then I absolutely am going to take some profits and just accept that I didn't sell at the exact top. I know I'm never going to sell at the exact top and I'm never going to buy at the exact bottom. I just have to be thereabouts. And that's the same for pretty much everyone. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. If you're just thereabouts, you're going to make good money anyway. You don't have to time it exactly. If you miss out on you know, a couple of thousand, a couple of hundred thousand, or maybe even a couple of million dollars, but you still made millions or a couple of thousand or a couple of hundred or whatever, then it doesn't really matter. Let's have a look at the market. 1.8 trillion, so we were getting up close to that sort of 1.88 trillion dollars. We've definitely come back from there a little bit. All right, BTC dominance still the same, under 60%. ETH dominance still pretty much the same around that 11.4, 11.3%. And gas prices still hovering around kind of, yeah, 140. And again, for me, I do think there's more upside to the market. I think there's uh, a substantial amount more upside. But there's just no guarantees in life. Not every cycle is the same, but they generally are similar. So we'll have a look at that. All right, as we can see, there's a bit of red going on here and some substantial pullbacks. I mean, you know, Cardano, again, it got right up to near that, you know, dollar forty mark. Well, it was, I think it was a dollar forty-one, close to the dollar forty-eight, which was the old high, the old all-time high. And we can see just a steep pull-off. But a bit of a mixed bag sort of all over the place. Let's have a look. In the last 24 hours, has anything pumped? Look, there has been some things. So Harmony still doing well. Uh, R-Weave, ZK Swaps, Pundix, Ch uh, Chili's, Theta Network, Stacks. We were speaking about that yesterday. So look, there's definitely some good gains here. And I mean, nothing too crazy. But again, Engine Coin still, you know, making some ground. Not at its all old all-time high which was set not that long ago but still doing all right so it's not the end of the world just yet all right what about losses we know there's been some losses has there been any major losses though not really filecoins down sort of 17 percent but again it was up you know basically a hundred percent so of course it's going to pull back some cardano again definitely a reasonable pullback there but it's come a long way you know a dollar 24 considering it was you know way down around the kind of 20 30 20 to 30 cent range for a very long time so yeah of course there's going to be some kind of pullback and again i did say i wouldn't be surprised if this came back down to a dollar and it did get very close to a dollar uh, which would have been down around about here i think it was a dollar one dollar four or something like that and then it pumped back up again to a dollar 41 nearly a dollar 48 it's old all-time high and now it's had a pullback again but look these losses again you know zillica you're down seven percent but you're up 40 percent over the last seven days that's still pretty good again it's disappointing if you bought the actual all-time high that really hurts but if you're a firm believer that we're still in the bull run then chances are there's probably more upside to come you're just going to have to suffer through some of this downside that's investing in general. Nothing goes up forever. There's always going to be peaks and troughs. And, you know, the hard part is, well, number one, working out whether you're in a bull market or a bear market. Actually, I probably wouldn't say that's the hardest thing. That's generally pretty easy. But just trying to work out whether this is something you should hold through or whether it's something that you should have sold. But again, let's say you did miss the all-time high by 8.4%. Well, you know, if you've just lost 8.4% profits, but you've made, you know, maybe a couple of hundred percent profit, it, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to be the end of the world. So anyway, markets kind of, you know, a little bit topsy-turvy. There was definitely some good gains to be made there. And look, you know, there's some, you know, just kind of stock standard losses, really. 10% from Cardano, you know, it's not really too much considering you're still up 
9% in the last seven days. So unless you bought in the last seven days, uh, then you may have lost something. But if you bought before that, then you're still up and that's not too bad. All right, let's move on to the charts. Let's have a look. How's Bitcoin doing? So we can see it sets up these patterns. It does this repeatedly. Pumps up, drops down. Pumps up, drops down. It's pumped up and now we're probably going to, you know, quite possibly drop down. Let's have a look. What's this thing doing at the moment? This is basically what's happening at the moment. And then we set this bottom one. So we'll change that color to red and leave that one as green. Right, so this is basically where we are right now. We can see it is forming a little bit of a wedge pattern. And that's generally what it does. But I mean, you could say that that was a down wedge there and that could have been coming down from there. And then it's also broken out to the upside. But I do think we're going to chop and change around in here for a while. So, you know, roughly based on this chart, I'd say somewhere around the 27th of March is when we're likely going to find out whether we break higher or break lower. Now look, the volume is very low at the moment, but it's sort of been low for a while, except for you know when we get some extreme sell-offs or when people think it's gotten really low and they're really chiming in to buy. This is basically just a bigger ranging pattern. So this is Bitcoin, you know, just kind of chopping around. Is it possible we're at the end of the bull cycle? Yeah, of course, anything's possible. Is it likely? No, I don't think it's likely. So again, for me, I'm just holding. And if you want to take some profits from your altcoins and things like that, again, you know, especially if you're you know, in some good profits, like a couple hundred percent or something like that, that's not a bad idea. No one ever lost money taking profits. Sure, you may lose some unrealized gains down the track, but if you made money, you made money. That's just simply how it works, plain and simple. All right, moving on, we've got some good stories. So we spoke about this the other day, and so again, another poll comes out. It says about 10% of US citizens plan to invest their $1,400 stimulus checks to buy Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So I do think once these start to filter into the market, and it takes a while, it doesn't just happen overnight. It's not like the day after people get these checks, all of a sudden it all goes into cryptocurrencies or any other kind of investment. They usually take that check work out how much they need to sort of survive and pay for certain things and then what's left over will go into the markets there is definitely some people who are just going to take that whole 1400 and dump it straight into you know whatever kind of investment it is but most people are going to have to spend some of this stimulus and then put what is remaining over and that takes time there's like a bit of a trickle effect and then all of a sudden the bitcoin price and the ethereum price and all the rest of it will really start to pop off that's generally the way it's worked. Again, it doesn't always play out the way it played out last time. And maybe it's going to be a lot less than 10% of people can afford to put in this time. Just because people fill out a survey and say they're going to doesn't mean they will. Things change. But also, maybe a lot more than 10% of people suddenly find they have enough money to put into cryptocurrencies. So we'll have to wait and see. But my gut feeling is this is going to take probably a couple of, you know, weeks at least before we see another really big price rise not saying we can't see a bit of a price rise but before we see bitcoin kind of i guess jump up to near eighty thousand, i don't think that's going to happen overnight i do think it's going to be a bit of a slow burn again these twenty thousand dollar increments that i've spoken about before they really are hard barriers when we got close to twenty thousand, bitcoin really struggled for a while underneath before it broke above same thing happened when we got near 40,000. It really struggled for a while before we were finally be able to finally able to break above. Now we've got to 60,000 and we're struggling and I think this will happen for a while and it's just going to be those $20,000 increments. I think the $100,000 barrier is going to be real hard and I wouldn't be surprised if we get close to it and have a massive sell off. Now look, the $100,000 barrier could be the end and it's not going to be 100000 exactly. It's going to be maybe a little bit over, maybe a little bit under. So again, could be maybe 94000 96000 could be 102000 that we briefly get to before there's a big sell-off. And that may literally be it. That may just be the indicator for people. All right, we made 100000 it's done. That's a de distinct possibility. As I said, my absolute minimum 
sort of peak for this cycle is somewhere around kind of the $84,000 mark. I do think that that could be the, the, the cycle peak. I just think that's on the low end. The $100,000 mark, if we can break through that. So again, we find some resistance, then finally come uh, above and beat it and then use that as um, a base, 100000 That's when I think, yeah, we could definitely sort of go... That's when things will get crazy. If Bitcoin can break above 100000 come back, retest it, use it as uh, support, that's when I think we definitely could see something like two, three, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 Bitcoin. It's just we need to see that first. I think the resistance will be quite large around that $100,000 mark. Again, never financial advice. That's just my personal opinion. All right. Bitcoin ETFs. So it is Bitcoin ETF decision season once again for America's securities regulator amid a changing of the guard at the commission. So the United States Securities and Exchange Commission now has 45 days to deliver an initial decision on the Van Eck Bitcoin Exchange Traded Fund filing, uh, having officially published the company's submission on its website on March 15th. So that's good news. I mean, this is something maybe in 45 days if they say yes, that could really boost the price up. It may not, we don't know, but this, you know, generally when these kind of things happen, it, it's it's a bullish kind of narrative. But look, maybe it's different this time. The SEC, though, can extend the deliberation window up to 249 days before delivering a final decision. I don't think they're going to wait 249 days for this, in all fairness. But the public also has a three-week period to submit comments uh, on the SECW website. So this, I would say, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, I think this will get up. You know, there's been other ETFs that have been passed, you know, and other ones coming worldwide. So I think Sweden's looking at getting one. Australia's looking at getting one. Canada's got one. I think there might be somewhere else that's got one as well. I can't remember just off the top of my head. America's not going to get left behind. I think this one probably will get up. And look, I'm just not sure on the time frame. It is entirely possible. It takes them basically nearly a year before a final decision is delivered. I just don't think it's going to happen. I don't think other countries around the world are going to take too long to get Bitcoin ETFs going. And the US will want to be on top of that. We'll wait and see though. Time will tell. We'll have at least a rough indication in the next 45 days, I would say. All right. Buyer of Beeple. Uh, his, the $69 million NFT purchase. Uh, so they were under a pseudonym of uh, Medicavan. Now it seems like we might have some uh, identification of exactly who they were. Now it doesn't go into too much detail, but it says uh, Sun, Sundari San is operating the Metapurse fund with Anand Ven... Oh, I'm going to butcher this and I do apologise. Venkat Tessarawan something like that. Anyway, uh, it seems like they're both uh, South in from the South Indian uh, state of Tamil Nadu. So, seems like our uh, Indian brothers and sisters have been getting into crypto as well, even though, you know, India itself is talking about banning, you know, certain cryptocurrencies and heavy regulating it and things like that. Uh, it doesn't seem to have slowed these uh, two people down. Now, again, I don't know whether gentlemen or ladies or exactly uh, what those names are and I apologise if they are ladies and I'm making it seem like they have to be men I have no idea who these people are but congratulations on them uh, for buying this piece it will just be interesting to see if we can hold that $69 million uh, at least in the short term I think maybe long term like you know decades it'll probably do quite well but yeah again I've, I've said this many times I just don't know enough about art to go out and buy any NFTs. Knowing my luck, I'd buy something and it'd, you know, lose 90% of its value and never regain it again. So I'd rather just uh, invest in the platforms that a lot of these are on. So again, Engine's my number one uh, sort of pick for NFTs and that. And I'm kicking myself. I wish I only had have bought more. But speaking of the NFT craze, I mean, look, let's go over here. So we're gonna have a look. Uh, new postage stamps are getting NFT treatment. Tony Hawk to Ollie into world of uh, collectibles, NFTs. NFT startup OpenSea raises $23 million in a Series A funding. 
NFTs are still really the rage and it's, this is probably going to go on for a little while longer. I do think NFTs will be something that have become a mainstay, uh, particularly for the younger generation in the future. Again, for me, I just don't know about art, so what to buy, what not to buy. So I'd rather just invest in the platforms that these are happening on. All right, so specifically Ethereum, uh, I've obviously got myself a position in Ethereum uh, and Engine. And I may look at Decentraland and other things like that. I had some Decentraland for a while. Sorry, this isn't Decentraland. I had some mana and it just underperformed for so long. It really, I didn't buy at a great time and it just, you know, it went down for a little bit and then just kind of sat sideways. So I took that money and invested in other things that have done a whole lot better and I guess percentage wise I could probably get back into mana and wouldn't really have lost anything but in the dollar value I definitely would have. All right, Facebook's digital currency Libra might have uh, taken a bit of a hit. So Kevin Whale, a Facebook executive and leader of DM, the company's digital currency initiative, announced on Thursday he is leaving in order to join a satellite firm. So that's not great news for Facebook, although maybe he's done all the work and you know it's just the final touches that need to be done from here. But we'll go on. The news appears to be another setback for Facebook's crypto ambitious uh, ambitions, I'm sure that's supposed to say, which the company unveiled with considerable fanfare in June of 2019, but have since stalled amid regulatory headwinds. Yeah, I don't know if they'll ever be able to get up with these cryptocurrencies, at least not the way they wanted. Whale, a veteran of Twitter, made his name at Facebook by helping to grow Instagram and then became one of the co-founders of the digital currency project that was initially known as Libra. Unfortunately, with all the you know, selling of information and things like that, uh, yeah, I think Facebook's going to have a really hard time ever being able to get this uh, stuff up off the ground. I think it's going to be a real slow burn. And again, they've already had to change it and they'll probably have to change it again. You know, They shot themselves in the foot. A lot of people are distrusting of Facebook uh, and the younger generation you know at least from my experience aren't using facebook a whole lot they're more onto you know tiktok and instagram and snapchat and things like that but you know we'll have to wait and see whether facebook you know can turn around their bad publicity into good publicity and then if they can ever really get this you know libra stuff up off the ground all right so here we go. Stock Exchange 6 aims to list Bitcoin on SDX crypto trading platform to launch this summer. So on March 17th, a report, a report, sorry, a report, a report <laughs> detailed that the digital exchange being developed by Switzerland's principal Stock Exchange 6 is preparing to launch by the summer of 21. So it's not too far away from them. The exchange called 6 Digital Exchange or SDX reportedly will also offer Bitcoin alongside the possibility of non-fungible tokens, we're talking about them again, assets like tokenized works of art. So again, this space is growing. There's so much news out there. Yes, you know, the bear, sorry, not the bear market. The market is, you know, a teensy bit bearish at the moment. But really, for me, and again, never financial advice, just personal opinion, I don't think it's bearish at all. I think it's just in a ranging zone. This is an accumulation phase. This is what happens before it gears up and makes its next big move up. It doesn't just keep jumping up. There's definitely going to be periods where it's super volatile. And again, we can sort of go back to Bitcoin. And look, this is pretty volatile. Up, down, up, down, up. We're coming back down. This is the real volatile sort of stage. And then we can see, like, look at this. This is slowly but creeping up, but then it's just sideways for ages. And this is basically sort of this right now. It was up, it was down, it was up, it was down, it was up, it was down, it was up. And then it was just going down for a while. Then it boosted up a little bit and then it went down and just traveling sideways. And I mean, look at this. This was from the 29th of April to the 20th of July. So that's two months of sort of sideways action that we had before it finally made a move up. And then we had the Bart Simpson. And then look, again from here, from the 26th of July through to the tw uh, 2nd of September. So again, months again, it was just changing sideways before it dropped off. And then here we go from the 3rd of September, really until around about, uh, let's probably go around about here, to the 7th of October it was ranging sideways. So this could last for a while. It doesn't just bang go up and just keep going up. 
Although really we could say since about here, since the 21st of October last year, it has generally been going up, but it's just this is where the volatility is getting larger because things are starting to get a little bit crazier. You know, the easy times to get in is when it's doing this and it never, you know, varies too much. And so you're not making too much money, but you're not losing too much money. It's when you get into this, oh, I'm making heaps of, heaps of money. Oh, God, I lost a lot of money. Oh, my God, I made heaps of money. Oh, no, I've lost more money again. That's the volatility and that is what's happening and this is generally what is happening when you're getting towards the peak. Now again, I don't think this is peak because we haven't had any real parabolic. I mean, this was semi-parabolic, but then it pulled back and broke that. So again, this wasn't really parabolic. It was semi-parabolic, broke down, but then we broke it again. Again, sorry. So you're going to know you know roughly when we really are at the kind of peak it's when it just literally goes vertical and these candles are just absolutely massive where they're going up thousands and, and thousands of dollars where bitcoins you know nearly doubling its price in a matter of a week or two that's likely when we're at the kind of blow off top for bitcoin and then generally what happens after that is then the altcoins have that last kind of final hurrah we'll have to wait and see if that happens all right, last but not least. So the US government has been selling Bitcoin and the winning bidder got a bargain. So the government has been selling or auctioning off, I should say, Bitcoin since 2014. And it's around about 170,000 Bitcoin that they got from uh, Silk Road. But it says down here, uh, a key reason Bitcoin's price has doubled this year, according to many, many an analysts, is so uh, is because so many few holders want to part with the cryptocurrency. So it means there's more buyers than sellers, and that is why it's going up at the moment. Now, don't get me wrong. There's people selling their uh, Bitcoin, but people are also buying it as well. Now we go down here. Now this week, this week's auction, the winning bidder got Bitcoin for fifty three thousand dollars. That, excuse me, is cheap. Because Bitcoin hasn't gone below fifty-four thousand dollars, two hundred at all, and it's been as high as fifty-nine, even up to sort of sixty thousand dollars. So they got that at a great discount. Now I don't know how you get involved with uh, being able to buy the Bitcoin that is being auctioned off, but if you can get it cheaper than market price, then that's an absolute steal. As I said yesterday, there was someone over in France that bought Bitcoin for $290,000 uh, in some kind of auction. It's got me stumped how they paid that much for it. And I can only assume that they bought that for literally a long-term hodl. But again, I just I didn't understand that story. I don't know why they wouldn't have just gone to the market and buy it. There has to be some kind of reason, maybe some kind of tax write-off that they can write uh, a lot of that off on tax when they don't make any money from it. But again, who knows? All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train, although we're in a little bit of a downward spiral at the moment, but there were gains to be made there, so it's not like there's none. And I'll see you next time.